I asked you guys to uh, yeah. be foolish to us. And you did. Thank you. Why is it that our best ideas come from the seller? This will be the first of a few videos where Rag will show you exactly how he grades the footage. Hopefully, he'll do an okay job. But that's of course for you to decide. The first clip which I've chosen to grow today is by a dude called Molly Capano. Hopefully, that's the right way to say it. A video for based in the United States. And this is a clip that he shot. And this is how we edited it. on an anamorphic lens, particularly the Siro lenses on the Sony A7 III with S-Log2. So to de-squeeze any anamorphic footage, all you have to do is go to your media pool, right click on the clip, go to clip attributes, and then choose the pixel aspect ratio and select anamorphic squeeze that your lens had. This lens, it was 1.33 I believe, so we're going to click 1.33, press OK, and it'll fix that clip straight away. So now if we look at the clip, you can see it's de-squeezed. This footage looks really good straight out of the camera. Kind of reminds me of the FX3 as well as the red Komodo. We're going to go straight to the color tab. First, we're just going to build out our node tree. Alt S to create a new node. So I'm going to create a couple of these. One, two, three. So we have four nodes all together and then press Alt L to create a layer node. One, two, and we'll create three. The layer node is just to separate different colors within the frame so i'll go through that in a bit so we can separate the skin from the dress from the background we'll create another two nodes alt s alt s this first node is i'll label this as contrast second node balance third node saturation and then this bottom node will be skin this node dress node can be ground global look sharpening so this will be the general node tree we may add a few nodes but this is basically the skeleton we might look a bit intimidating but we'll go through this like we have before this is usually our starting point for most grades first thing we're going to do is of course we're going to find our hero frame so as you can see in the scripts here the blacks are not clipped nor is the highlights and to know if a clip is clipped within the highlights this top line will just be a straight line and that means there's no more information beyond that line first thing we're going to do is we're going to add contrast so we're going to add contrast here of course you don't want to overdo it i'm just going to bring it up here the pivot is one of my favorite tools if you wanted to get a brighter image you're going to reduce the pivot that's going to get the contrast to hit only the darker areas and if you increase the pivot it's going to hit the brighter areas as well if you're editing something during blue hour or a really dark look you might want to push the pivot towards the right if you wanted to create a more brighter image move the pivot towards the left with skin tones you want to kind of push it a bit more towards the left from where it naturally stays keep the pivot about here so that looks good and here with the balance all we're going to do so what we're going to do is stretch out these waveforms as much as we can we're going to try and push this almost to the top and push the shadows almost to zero so just so we can get as much information as we can when we're making the selections for the actual color grading so all we're going to do is you're going to push the gain and i'm going to push the shadows which is the lift so lift is shadows gamma is midtones gain is highlights so i'm going to push the lift down is i'm going to lift the gamma up Lift the highlights down, lift the shadows down, bring the gain down. We go to saturation. Generally with 8-bit footage, to use this saturation slide, the image starts to break up a lot. All we do is we come over to this tool here, the RGB mixer. So red output up, green output up, blue output up. I don't know why, but this, this just seems to saturate the image in a much cleaner way. Therefore, it prevents your footage from breaking down, which is the main problem with any 8-bit footage is the footage just breaks down one node that i did forget to add so all i'm going to do is add the white balance node after the contrast what you can do is push the gamma towards the magenta essentially what we've done now we've stretched out the image so much that now we have loads of information to play with to now shift all the colors around in the layer mixer so if i go straight to the skin now and i go to the qualifier which is here and all i have to do is make sure you're clicking this qualifier icon right here select the skin and then you can either press shift H or you can press the wand and you'll be able to see your selection. This kind of actually looks like the Mona Lisa. You get a better selection. So all I'm going to do is increase the width. I'm going to decrease the saturation. 
with these sliders wherever this area occupies. That's the area where your mask is affecting essentially. As you can see, it's select the oranges and the yellows. The skin is quite yellowy. The reason why you want to get correct white balance and correct balancing is so you have that separation between the skin tones and the, the foreground colors, just so then you can separate them in post. All I'm going to do now is go to the blur radius, especially with 8-bit footage, your selections do not have to be perfect. They just need to be good enough. All I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that luminance higher, go to page number two, denoise and increase that. Once it gets brighter, the skin on the face isn't selected anymore. So what I'm going to do is just go to luminance, bring this up, decrease the, the low value on the saturation just so you get those extra bits in the face. That looks all right. You're going to get out of that, the magic wand, put that to zero. You can see now that the skin and the arms are being selected, which is really nice. Not everything is selected, but that doesn't matter because we'll fix that later. Of course, we don't want to leave the skin grayscale. So I'm going to come back to the saturation, decrease the saturation a bit. Let's push a bit more orange, a bit more magenta into that skin tone, just so you get that bit of separation from the greens in the background. So I'm going to push this up to now. You can see the skin just look, just has a bit more life before and this is after. Lots of subtle changes create a big change in the end. You don't need to make huge changes with every single node you make. Small changes is, is usually the way to go and the best way for your footage not to break up. Actually is looking really nice straight out of camera. This is just a very high key commercial kind of look with the dress is select the dress. So now we have these reds and it's going to select all the reds. And same thing again. I'm just going to do this a bit faster this time. So select the reds increase that saturation, increase that luminance, then go over to the denoise, increase the denoise, go to the blur radius, increase the blur radius. This denoise is just for the mask. It's not actually denoising. You're able to use in the free version of DaVinci Resolve. Hopefully everything we're going to do today, you can use in the free version. Scroll around the clip. Look if there's any missing parts, if everything is selected. Dress is looking a bit orange. However, I want the dress to look more red than orange. Saturation, I'm going to decrease just this a little bit, go to the hue and push this a bit towards the reds and the magentas. So if I push it too much, as you can see, the whole dress changes. Now you have a blue dress, but of course it's changed her lip color as well. Shift this a little bit towards the magentas, not too much. Maybe use the offset to then push all the colors towards the reds a bit. You don't want it to be super bright. If you push 8-bit footage too hard, it's going to break up. However, it's holding up pretty decently here. Of course, you're affecting those lips as well, which you don't really want to do. Push it a little bit towards the reds, like there. So far, so this was a before and after, and it does look quite nice and really clean, really hard to get with the Sony A7III sometimes. Also, the importance and what Marley's done really well, exposing your clip perfectly. So this was an S-Log2, so he would have exposed this by two stops over. I've been meaning to create a tutorial where we do go over this and I will do that soon. However, this is a great example of why exposing your clip perfectly. And then we have the background. Now with the background, you can do anything you like. So if you look what I do now and I just decrease saturation, of course, so if I decrease saturation, see sometimes your selections don't work. Of course, I've pushed the saturation to almost zero. So we don't want that. So maybe if I push saturation towards, you know, you wanted an awesome look, you can do that. However, as you can see, the hair also does change color. What I should have done is create a, another layer node. So the layer that is at the bottom is always the layer that is on the top. That does not make any sense. So if I'm altering the skin in this bottom node, so if I delete this, the skin node is essentially at the top. So if, you, if you're doing layers in like Photoshop, this is essentially the top layer, the opposite here that makes sense if i'm selecting the skin here that means the skin will not be affected in any of these i've selected all the skin here here i've selected the dress so now this background node the dress won't be affected but also the skin won't be affected in this but everything else will be so therefore i'm going to add another layer node is select grass uh, and the grass and the skin is two very different colors however all i'm going to do with the grass is i'm actually going to bring it below the dress node move the skin to the bottom node, which is the top node, and then the dress to the second to last, and then and then I move this grass layer, let's call it the green layer, to the second to last. So now essentially this whole node tree will shift and it will look like this. So if I press F2, I put greens with the greens, I'm gonna select the greens now, increase the saturation, increase the luminance increase the width. We're not selecting any of that skin or that hair. You can see it is a bit because we selected that yellow. If you push this a bit towards the right, we're good. We're going to shift that blur radius up. We're going to shift the denoise up. The selection looks great. 
So what I'm going to do now is you can actually do anything. I do really like the greens how they are. I think it looks really, really nice. If you wanted to change it just for the sake of grading. So we've now shifted the greens down. You've got really muted look. This kind of uh, works really well for weddings. So you've got this kind of late autumn, early winter type look. However, if you did want to shift the hue of the of the greens, what you can do is if I bring the greens back and you can get this kind of autumn kind of look, even push the saturation up rather than pushing it down and push the hue towards the right, which will make the greens more orangey. It created this almost autumn type look. It's a very strong look. It still does work quite nice, especially it complements the orange skin. Um, and that does look pretty nice. What I also really like is shifting the greens a bit more towards the blue. So if I shift this hue down to an almost blue color and then shift the saturation down a bit. And now you've created this really nice separation, contrasting colors between almost the blues and the oranges. It just makes her stand out a lot more. So a really good separation that really helps to bring up the production value of your footage. Of course, in the brighter regions, it doesn't look as good. If you wanted to expose for the brighter regions, we can go and shift the exposure down a bit. More shadowy areas, more overcast areas. The footage is looking really, really nice. The skin is looking still a little bit yellowy. So what we can do is go to the skin, shift this a bit more towards the red, bring it down a bit, maybe shift the saturation down, and you just create a bit more of that natural looking skin. The hair, which is still fully saturated, but I kind of like that. You can go back into the background and go to the saturation and decrease that just so we don't have super saturated areas and it looks a bit more natural as well and it helps to blend everything all together. However, to really blend clips in Global Look, we're able to just kind of mesh everything together, create a bit of a cast and help the colors and it kind of removes any blodges with the clip. Go to the gamma, shift this maybe towards the yellows or you can shift this towards the blues. Whatever, whatever you want to shift it, you can shift it in any direction you like and create a color shift towards your liking so if we look at this now we've kind of created this almost i want to say twilight kind of look however i've never seen twilight i've only seen stills however what i want to do is maybe shift the gamma towards the yellows create more of a summery kind of feel here you're going to see the skin overexposed a bit it doesn't look as good because we've graded towards almost the diffused areas so when she comes back walking here it does look really really nice i love this bit as well the motion blur any type of dynamic shot i i just love and i think the colors just work so well so the great thing about the global look is once you've now shifted the colors towards a certain area what you can do is then come back to your layer nodes and then shift the colors into any direction you want so now since we've shifted the global look towards the yellows and the greens the skin is also looking a bit more yellowy and a bit more greeny so what we can do come back to the skin shift that towards the reds Maybe use the hue as well, decrease the saturation a bit. I want to select a bit more of the skin actually. I don't want to select the eyes, that's the only thing. Sometimes you select the skin and you'll select the eyes and it's quite obvious, especially if they don't have brown eyes. It's kind of a tell. It does kind of work sometimes with the color grade where good lighting really helps to kind of separate those colors. However, in this clip, we can kind of get away with it. Now the skin's looking a lot more natural and the colors just look really nice um with 8-bit footage if you're able to push colors to look really high key and vibrant and it doesn't look all bludgy it does look clean then you've done a really really good job so with 8-bit footage it's really important just to have really good lighting good separation if you can see with the lamp posts here a bit too much so if i click on this if you come over to clean black and clean up those blacks a bit if i shift the width towards the right a little bit get less of those yellows a little bit is okay i guess Maybe you pretend it's a bit of moss. Skin's looking good, hair's looking good, dress is looking good. Everything is looking good. Colors are looking great. And you got a nice bit of separation. The colors are not blodgy. Skin is clear, which is important, especially in this type of light. Molly, you've done an awesome job. This clip is, is so nice. I've, I've complimented it so much. And all we have to do in the end is go to sharpening, click the sharpening tool here, and then go to your radius. Drag that down to about 0.47. So let's have a watch. So thank you again to everybody who sent over some clips. The footage looks sick i honestly thought maybe one person will send some footage but we got i think about about 13 or 14 people sending through some some really good footage so i'm looking forward to grading them